Latin America and Caribbean is such an important growth market for JetBlue. And secondly, MasterCard is such an important partner to JetBlue. We recently launched the co-brand card in Puerto Rico, co-brand card in the Dominican Republic, and we'll be launching a new co-brand card in the US in early 2016, which we're extremely excited about. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to take the opportunity to, today to take you into the JetBlue story. I think you'll find it's one of inspiration, innovation, but also of challenges. You know, when I speak at these events, I don't only want to share the good things that happen, I want to share the challenges as well, because I think there's innovation and learnings in every moment, and sometimes it's in the most difficult ones when you can truly innovate. Innovation is often hiding in plain sight. Our chairman said, sometimes innovation doesn't look like a new social media channel, iPhone app, or nifty widget. It's any time you're doing something in a better way. Innovation can simply be tweaks around the edges of existing products and services. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm going to show you some nifty widgets today. I'll show you some uh, uh, applications. But I think the true story here around innovation is that it's not always a reinvention of something. Sometimes it's tweaks around things that we experience every day in life, which we can make better. Some of you may be familiar with, but there was a TED Talks that was done, a very popular one, by Simon Sinek, who said that many companies, or most companies, speak from the outside in. They talk about what they do, they talk about how they do it, and sometimes they even say why. But the truly inspired brands communicate from the inside out. And by why, it's not to make a profit. That's an outcome, Simon says. He says, by why, he means, what is your beliefs? What is your values? Why do you get up in the morning, and why should anybody care? And customers who are inspired by the brands will buy from them because they care about what they, what they stand for which sets up a really nice backdrop for the JetBlue story. Our founders, uh, back in around 2000, got together. And many of them, some of them had worked at airlines, others worked in other space. But they said, let's think about how we build an airline from the ground up. This is an opportunity to, to do something different. You know, for many years, customers flew. Years ago, they dressed up for the event. You know, like in the movie Catch Me If You Can, people were excited about travel. And over the years, that experience just got worse and worse and worse. And so here was an opportunity for JetBlue to come in and to reinvent an experience for customers. And so the why for JetBlue was, how do we bring humanity back to air travel? And this is a pretty lofty goal. This is an industry that was 100 years old, had gone through uh, many changes, is highly regulated. But there's an opportunity here to think about what could we do different, and that's innovation. And it was also led with a system of values, safety, caring, integrity, passion, and fun. And for many companies, all companies have values, and they're posted on the wall. But how many of them actually listen to them and make decisions based on them? And this is something that's been very inherent in JetBlue, which is let's use our values to have day-to-day -day conversations around what products we launch, how we make decisions, are we living up to the mission that we put forth? And they're also innovative from the product of the standpoint of product. How do we differentiate the product experience? And this is the interior of the aircraft back in 2000. And while it may not seem very revolutionary now, putting live TV on board was very revolutionary at the time, the idea that you could watch live TV from 35,000 feet. And simple things, talking about innovating around the edges, like removing the large metal carts that hit your elbows down the aisle. Or not overbooking, because when people buy a ticket, uh, showing up and saying, sorry, we, we don't have a seat for you, isn't, isn't certainly customer friendly. Free unlimited snacks on board, which again, low cost, but customers care about it. I actually spoke to uh, one of our Mosaic customers yesterday who said to me, I was shocked. I fly this other airline all the time. I asked them for a second bag of peanuts, and they said no. He's like, I go on JetBlue flight, and the, the flight attendant says, take any, all the snacks you want. And so it's these little gestures of goodwill, which are really important for the customer experience. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your products are. If you don't back that up with great customer service, customers just don't care. 
And I'm sure you've all experienced it where you had bought a great physical product, but when you dealt with their customer service folks, you didn't get that experience that you wanted. And so having happy crew members who actually care about the customer experience is extremely important. Now, don't get me wrong. It's a challenge as you grow as a company to continue to find people who are engaged and excited about the business, but so much of that comes back to the innovation culture that you create as a company. I'll share more about that afterwards. And what we say at JetBlue is, you're always in blue, which means it doesn't matter if you're at work or in your personal life, you're representing the company. And I'll give this quick example of Eric Scott, this pilot of ours who met this young boy, underprivileged, uh, comes from an underprivileged area. But the boy showed a real interest in uh, aviation and science and technology and math. And so he mentored him, and now this young boy has gotten older a number of years later and is now in an aviation program and is uh, training to be a pilot. And it just shows that the impact of our crew members goes beyond just their job. It's how can they really inspire people in their day to day. This is what we expect from, from our people. And so things like signature moves, that, um, this is at some of our airports where we, we wave off the customers. But most importantly, it's thanking our customers for their business, for uh, flying with us. Because we always tell our customers, we're in business because of you. And we remind ourselves every day that customers can choose any airline, and it's our job to convince them to fly with JetBlue. I think when companies grow up and as they mature, and I, could, I can give you numerous examples of this, you hit this defining moment of challenge, which either makes or breaks the organization. And for JetBlue, um, which started off as a very simple network of New York to Buffalo, New York down to, down to Fort Lauderdale, and then growing very rapidly over a short period of time, resulted in, in a very big meltdown back in uh, 2007, February 2007, during a big winter storm, where operationally speaking, we weren't able to handle the challenges of the event. People ended up sleeping in the airport, were on planes for long hours, and we didn't live up to the value proposition that we um, was set out to set out to provide. And from an innovation standpoint, even during this tough time, we thought about how we can improve ourselves and do better. And I, I would say this is probably uh, the first public apology from a CEO on a social media network at the time. He went out on YouTube and posted a video not only apologizing for what happened, but more importantly, talking about what we were gonna do in the future to make sure it never happened again. He was on David Letterman. We've communicated to customers, and the most important thing was we were open and honest about our challenges. We didn't try to hide anything. We said, here's what the issues are, we're maturing as a company, and we need to do things differently. And we also decided to launch the first customer bill of rights for an airline, where we said, you know what? We're gonna give you a great experience, but if something goes wrong, here's how we're gonna make sure we take care of you if those things happen. And it is a challenging business, whether it be weather events or other ones that, we, that we've worked through. And so for the last, I'd call it seven or eight years, it's been a re reinvention for JetBlue. And the focus has been on how do we continue to innovate as a company as we mature? And it's not easy. You know, the companies, the startup companies that are out there today Think about where they'll be 10 or 15 years from now, and can they keep up that same level of innovation culture within their company? Can they continue to deliver great products? Or some, will somebody else come out and, and, and move them off their throne or their spot? When I was hired, I was given a pretty big task, which was, how do you take this great brand and enter it into the digital realm? And how do, you, how do you live up to that digital experience? And so we came up with our own vision statement, which was, to inspire humanity through digital by providing an experience that's technologically advanced yet exceptionally human. So how do we make this great technology experience that matches the cultural aspect and the personal aspect of our business? How do we bring the two together? And so we deemed an internal project which has uh, been uh, over the last several years called our digital refresh. It started with a refresh of our website. It went into the launch of our mobile applications. More recently, wearables. Uh, but it's an ongoing, uh, ongoing initiative. And the learnings for, that I want to share with you here are really twofold. One is we're, we're in a world now where you can't simply um, design your experience for a single device. You have to think about how customers will use those devices 
together in different experiences. And when you think about travel, it's everything from the home to the airport to the in-flight experience and then back home again. And how do we make sure that we piece all of that together? Secondly, you know, the relationship with your technology teams, the world has changed. It's not the environment anymore where you write a set of business requirements, do some design work, and then throw it over the fence and say, okay, go, go build this for me. Bringing the technologists into the discussion with the creative teams, with the designers, with your UX folks, very early in the process that they understand what you're trying to accomplish and then building products that accommodate is extremely important. So the world of um, technology and business is merging. And so we need to adopt this as, a co as companies and we need to embrace it and be excited by it. And also during this time, we completely revamped our loyalty program. Not only from the standpoint of design and innovation from a digital standpoint, but also reinventing the way we look at the program from a miles-based program to a revenue-based program. And we were the f one of the first airlines to do that and many of the airlines have followed suit. Reason being is, at the end of the day, the way we measure loyalty is how much money do you spend with us, how long do you fly with us, not necessarily how many miles you fly with us. And so in many cases, we're rewar rewarding long-haul travel, but not necessarily the frequency of purchase. And so this is something to think about even from a financial standpoint in terms of are we rewarding customers the right way. Very excited to announce a new JetBlue uh, tablet application coming out in just the next couple of weeks. Uh, Apple's launched a uh, product called TestFlight. We're able to put uh, new applications in the hands of users, so we have about 150 people who are actively testing this in production right now so that we can find bugs early on and then be able to iterate on the product to then deliver it to our customers. So some really cool stuff in here around things like being able to scan passport information so that you don't have to type it all in, scan credit card information so that it's quick purchase, uh, connection to wallet. Uh, there's just so many um, great stuff in this application, so we hope you enjoy it. So customers book, customers run a loyalty program, how do we then bring that same experience into the airport environment? And this is a photo of uh, T5 at JFK, which is our home, where we spent a lot of time thinking about how we make for an unbelievable experience at the airport. So we're used to airports being fairly not good looking, uh, sometimes challenging, sometimes the food's not that great, and we had an opportunity here to create just an amazing experience for our customers at JFK T5 and also be able to leverage the space in a very cool way. So we have a concert series there called JetBlue Live, where we've had a lot of um, terrific artists come to perform for us as a surprise and delight for our customers. And so uh, Pedro Capo will actually be performing this Thursday in San Juan, thanks to our partnership with Santander and MasterCard. So if you happen to be in the airport on Thursday at 4.30 p.m., please stop by, because there's going to be a, a great surprise and delight concert there. Most importantly, it's about how you remove friction from the experience, right? I mean, this whole conference is about uh, payments and removing uh, hurdles for customers and enabling experience. And so for us, you think about sort of antiquated things that people have to do at the airport, like check in, it, it doesn't make sense. You know, even checking into a hotel, you know, the process of doing those things are going away. So offering, of course, mobile boarding passes, uh, which has started to build in terms of penetration, has been one of those things. And we also have been beta testing an auto check-in product. Uh, many of you sh should be receiving, about 40% of our customers right now are being auto checked in, where you don't have to check in, we basically just send you your boarding passes. We'll soon be um, adding that SMS capability to that, so you'll just get your boarding pass, you don't have to do anything, you show up at the airport, go right to your gate. And that's what this should be about. It should be about removing steps in the process. And of course, wearables. You know, and, and some people could look at wearables as, yeah, it's just another screen. You know, but think about it for travel where you know, you're lugging a whole bunch of luggage and for me, you know, two kids with you and you know, you're trying to get through airport security and so things like wearables is actually really great in this environment where you can quickly scan your mobile boarding pass, where you can get flight alerts or flight status on uh, what's happening with your, uh, your experience, and also being able to push important information all the way through the travel ribbon. So wearables is something that we jumped on very early. We were very excited to get a call from Apple while they were in the development stage and invited us down to Cupertino to work on the initial application development with them. And 
we, we greatly appreciate those kind of experiences. Apple and Google and others who have brought us very early into the process, it just shows that they care about the travel industry and they also care about trying to innovate in this space. And the story here, and this one I think is a, is a, was a good lesson learned for JetBlue, but one I'd share with you is that being the first mover is not always the best advantage, right? We're all taught in business school, first mover advantage. That's what you want. You want to do things first. And certainly, we have many firsts. We've done a lot of things very early on. But for us, uh, we wanted to launch in-flight connectivity, and we felt that we didn't want to go with a subpar product. There was a lot of products out there. We could have got something off the shelf. What we wanted was high-speed internet access for free. That was the goal, high-speed internet access in the sky, 35,000 feet for free. And so between our subsidiary, uh, Live TV, or formerly wholly owned subsidiary Live TV, and a company called Viasat, we launched a satellite and have offered broadband internet access with FlyFi. And with that, we've been able to um, provide some great content uh, through a portal, uh, which is called The Hub, where you're able to uh, great, get great content through advertisers like MasterCard and a partnership with Amazon, which we've launched recently. So extremely exciting as well. We're also innovating in the in-flight space from the standpoint of redesigning the entire interior experience. Um, I don't know if some of you have experienced the new A321 airplane. It's a larger aircraft where we're offering our mint service now, but everything that you see on the JetBlue interiors today will change. New seatback TVs, new entertainment, new slimline seats, which you see here with um, power ports and um, just much better technology and also lighter and more fuel efficient, which is extremely important for the environment. And Mint, anybody flown Mint here? Raise your hand. Okay, we got a couple. Uh, Mint is our uh, new uh, take on first class product that JetBlue launched just about a year ago from New York to LAX and also to San Francisco, and now we'll be flying it down to the Caribbean as well. And what's exciting about Mint is that for a long time, customers were asking JetBlue for this product, and we were hesitant because JetBlue's brand was built on the idea that everybody gets a great experience and that we didn't want to differentiate. And as we thought more about it, we said, you know what, there's a way to do this in a way where we can provide a great experience, but don't take away the experience from, from our other customers. And so there's no curtains, there's no red carpet, no pun intended, that comes out, there's no special lines, but there's a um, special service that we provide for our Mint customers who want that, you know, who fly frequently and want that level of service. From food to um, drinks on board and amenities to new fully lie flat seats for our customers to enjoy. Certainly a, a big evolution for the JetBlue product for those of you who have flown with us over the last 15 years. And of course, comfort. Also, what we've done as part of this transition is to think about the uh, transactional experience for our in-flight crew members. So what we've done is we've provided all of our in-flight crew members tablets. And not only these tablets point of sale devices, but they also are forms of CRM where we can take customer information and provide it to our crew members to inform a much better conversation and experience. We were the first airline to offer Apple Pay in the Sky, which we were excited about. NFC-enabled device where customers can pay for their products using Apple Pay and other forms of wallets. Extremely exciting. And we're extremely excited to get the co-brand card in here because we think that with digital wallets specifically, if you can be the first card and wallet within the digital space, that might be even more meaningful than being the first card and wallet within your, your physical wallet. And of course, some special promotions we've done over the years, whether it be all you can jet during the 2008, 2009 financial crisis where People weren't flying, and so we launched a $599 product to fly anywhere you wanted for 30 days. And the amount of social excitement around this, the idea for customers to be able to fly us uh, during this time frame to build relationships, to launch businesses, to do other things, was just a, a terrific promotion uh, that got a lot of pickup. Our flight etiquette program, where we talk to our customers via Facebook around things that they could do to provide their fellow uh, passengers and customers a better flying experience. And mo most recently, a short film that we launched uh, called Human Kinda, which talks about how, as people, we are so busy these days and so ingrained in technology and other things that sometimes it starts to 
begin to impact our relationships and our health and other things. And um, you know, why did we do this? Does this have anything to do with travel? No, but it's about the Inspire Humanity mission and how do we um, talk about topical things that our customers care about. So I want to close very quickly because I'm close on time, just around innovation culture, which is I truly believe this, that if you can't make your employees happy, you can't make your customers happy. You have to create an environment where your employees, and for JetBlue that means our crew members, are happy with the place they work because they want to deliver a great experience to customers. And so putting them in an environment where they feel uh, and breathe the brand and are excited about uh, innovating new ideas, like our home in Long Island City, or at the airports we operate, or our recently built hotel in Orlando where we bring all of our crew members to train, whether you're a senior vice president or a baggage handler, to learn about the JetBlue brand. It's a big capital investment, but something that we think is important to uh, the, our people and to our customers. Our planes carrying the messages. And a lot of us have gone through uh, the Stanford Design Thinking School around learning how to um, integrate or learn how customers experience our products, not in a focus group room, but in the environments in which they're interacting with the brand. And of course, similar to the event today, you're participating in things like hackathons. Not only because hackathons are gonna produce great ideas, but because we wanna get our, our, our crew members out, into, out of the office into an environment where they can be creative um, with folks who are not as close to the challenges that we have on a day-to-day -day basis and can think unrestricted about new ideas. So, you know, 11 JD Power Awards later, you know, certainly we're proud of the things that we're done, we've done, but we never look in the rearview mirror and we always want to move forward, which means never being complacent and always challenging ourselves to think bigger and better. I think when you get to the point where uh, you're so great and you're so proud of the work that you've done and that's all you focus on, you lose sight of what's coming. And so I just want to thank you for your attention and for having me here today and for your partnership. And for those of you who fly JetBlue, thanks, thanks so much. Appreciate it.